Hello, if you're preparing for an interview with the college for the specialist pathway, then you're probably wondering what sort of questions are you going to get asked about you as a consultant, as a specialist in your own field? Well, if you've followed any of my videos, you'll know that the interview for the specialist pathway usually takes on a certain nature, regardless of every college. Usually the first half of the interview is about questions about your training program and how closely that aligns with the curriculum uh, for the relevant program here in Australia. Um, so the easiest thing to do there is to compare what you did with that curriculum and that'll help you understand what sort of questions you might get and gaps. But then the second half of the interview is usually about feeling you out, getting a feel for you as a specialist, a consultant in your own right, and whether you'll fit in uh, to Australia, whether you are doing similar things to what consultants here in Australia do in your own field. And of course, again, if you follow some of my videos, you'll know that I do point out that on pretty much every college website, there's kind of a high level framework that kind of describes the types of behaviors and capabilities and skills and competencies that the college expects in its own fellows here in Australia. So that if you're applying to that college, then you're expected to be at a similar level because once you become a fellow of the college, they want you to maintain that sort of capability and professionalism. So, you know, here's the College of Physicians, professional framework, practice framework, communication, quality and safety, teaching and learning, a little bit of sort of extra detail about what each means, research, cultural competence, etc. And we, we know the RACS, it's, uh, the College of Surgeons has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten competencies now, the most recent addition being cultural competence and cultural safety and of course pretty much every college has a professional framework they kind of use it to establish what those fellows can do within what's called the scope of practice how they should be maintaining the standards and it's also looked at in terms of your continuing professional development and they're all pretty much based bar maybe one or two on the Canadian CanMeds framework, which I've done a few videos about, and I think is a fantastic framework. In fact, some of the colleges like psychiatry, radiology, etc., have just literally adopted this framework, which I think makes a lot of sense. So this is a seven dimensional framework with some, again, some pretty high level concepts here. So that's all great and well and good. And yes, you should be kind of thinking about how do you demonstrate medical expertise in your current consultant role? How do you just, just demonstrate high level, good quality communication? leadership etc but it doesn't kind of give you the the level of detail you want something else that might help you in anticipating the questions you might get about you as a consultant in the specialist pathway uh, interview assessment is to go and look at the training handbooks or the training curriculums for the various specialties so for example in general and acute care medicine with the college of physicians we have a few kind of key things here's your curriculum which you need to look at and your professional qualities curriculum which is for all fellows that's worth looking at as well but if we go to the general and acute care medicine training curriculum and you'll see this pretty much for every college of physician advanced training program we skip down past the acknowledgements introduction etc and these these curriculums and handbooks usually go for about somewhere between 50 to 80 pages but we start to get some information here the definition of what a general physician is their attributes here as well and so this section here and kind of down to here is kind of a really good section to go through and sort of think, well, do I, do I demonstrate this in my specialist work? Because these are the are basically the outcomes that they're intending for the local trainee. So this is what a fellow should look like coming out of training. And so therefore you want to be able to demonstrate you're as close to that as possible. So am I an expert diagnostician? How do I demonstrate that in my work? What examples can I give? Do I provide integrated care? Do I do a lot of collaborating and networking and bringing other team members involved to optimize care for my patients? Do I solve problems? Am I a good patient advocate? So go through those sections, look at anything that's entitled an outcome or expected competencies of the completion of training and make sure that you can cover that in terms of A, how you've been trained, but B, how you're continuing to professionally develop and demonstrate those roles and competencies in your specialist practice where you are at the moment. Another example, College of um, Pathology, in their general pathology training handbook this one is actually set out even better here are the aims of the training program so again what they're aiming to develop there's even a list of learning outcomes and training uh, activities that you can go through and you'll see that for all the other curriculum i think uh, 
hematology I noticed was really well set out in like in one page I think it was so it will depend even within the colleges general aims of the training program so this is what you as a hematology specialist should be able to demonstrate to the college if you're applying for hematology okay uh, so you can see how you can even like generate some questions around that think about you know if they're going to give me some clinical vignettes uh on things what they might be on uh you know am i going to get some curly questions well they've even listed some particular techniques here that you might get some curly questions on so that will sort of help and guide you radiology uh, also has some uh learning outcomes in they've actually got like actual learning outcomes handbooks which maybe start to get a little bit unwieldy because they go, there's like a lot on the intrinsic role establishing rapport communicating communicating with colleagues so it's probably maybe a little bit too much but at least it gives you a bit of a guide in terms of what they're looking to see you demonstrate or maybe some examples you need to accumulate from that and then finally if we look at surgery surgery can be a bit hard not all but a few of the set training programs curriculums are paywalled so they're hard to get access to but again neurosurgery they've got a nice little statement of competence that goes for two pages and this is the overall objective of the set training program neurosurgery is to produce competent independent specialists with neurosurgeons and this is what they expect you local trainees and therefore you if you're wanting to apply to be a neurosurgeon in australia which is quite difficult because there's only limited spots but anyway there's a list of things that you know topical areas that you're most likely get grilled about in terms of the consultant section of your specialist pathway interview so hopefully that helps you and understanding what you might get questions around in the college assessment interview for the specialist pathway uh, of course, I've got a free course that covers a whole lot of other issues around the specialist pathway uh, and some services to help you on my website. Finding these videos helpful, please follow, subscribe and turn on notifications. Submit a comment if you've got a question about this. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye for now.